everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Winds Channel. I'm going to take a look at the astrological weather forecast for May 10th through the 16th. And um, we're coming off um, uh, a week where I thought some good positive energy coming in. Uh, if you remember from last week where I said there were opportunities to maybe like... Um, create some new connections with groups, things like that, that coincide with a lot of the goals that you may have yourself. And I think we're going to have a continuation of that energy this week, too. But our main feature of the week is going to be a new moon in Taurus at 22 degrees Taurus on Tuesday. And we've got some other interesting energy. But first on Monday... Like I said, there's like a continuation of that energy from last week of like opportunities to create contacts, um, intellectual connections, um, associations with groups that are aligned with your like purpose or goal right now. What we have going on on Monday is Mercury is in Gemini now conjuncting the North Node in Gemini. So you remember the North Node went into Gemini last year. It's an 18-month transit. And that was when I was really saying, you know, there's a lot of um, what that North Node is saying, like, to make local connections, to focus on your local area. And if you'll remember, that was during the time when a lot of places were initially going into COVID lockdown. So it was a very localized energy to the extreme at that point of, of many people not even really leaving their home or their local neighborhood or at the most really le not leaving their local area or town. So really finding that North Node, that Dharma, the answers, what we're heading for, the path that we're on within that area, within that local and that Gemini energy of making connections with local people, your neighbors, your friends, family that are in your area and, and, and taking on a lot of the challenges of now, this time, on that level. And, and so this Mercury now has you know, gone into Gemini and is going to conjunct that North Node and really push that desire to make unions with people that can be individually, communities, groups, things like that. At the same time, Mercury is sextiling Chiron. So we also have this energy of wanting, um, you know, like a strong desire intellectually to learn more at, at which helps our healing, which brings in healing forms to our mind, to our being, and helps create opportunities within those group structures for us to to bring healing into our lives. And we, you know, we may get it on both ends. We may be the healer for some people, and we may be the person being healed in relations with other people. What's interesting about Monday, too, though, is it is the day this week where the moon is going to trigger the um, the Saturn-Uranus square, which is running all year. So like I said, every week we have a day where we really get triggered into that energy of watching structures around us falling apart. And it can be upsetting. The moon is conjunct Uranus this week. That can be very upsetting emotions, very shocking situations that come on very quickly out of the blue, out of nowhere, kind of hit you over the head and, and can be very upsetting, really change your whole day, what your expectations, things were. And then, they, and then the moon squares Saturn at the same time. So you can be feeling that on either end, like wanting once again to bring some control back to a chaotic situation or is the chaotic situation been formed because there was just so much control and restriction that there was like a rebellious energy that came towards that and created an upsetting situation? 
All right, and then, so Monday, an interesting day. Um, Tuesday is the day of the new moon. And it's at 22 degrees of Taurus. And it's interesting, it is separating from that square to Saturn and stuff, so it's pretty far away by then. So what you want to look at in your chart is where 22 degrees Taurus falls and the house that that falls into. And that's what this new moon's energy is going to apply to in that area of your life. And you'll see some new. So, of course, new moons are always about beginnings, new things, starting new things, planting new seeds, a new cycle, a new lunar cycle that'll last another month. So when you think about Taurus, Taurus is the most fixed sign. And it's it's got a lot of like stubborn energy. Like it it knows what works for it and it feels very comfortable in knowing what works for it. And yet, like, the thing with Taurus is, like, it can continue to cling on to those old things, even when it's obvious around it that a lot of those things are no longer working well or they're outdated or there's issues with those things that are being pretty much ignored or being swept under the rug, kind of like. And many times the way that's what's happening is the emotional part of that stuff is what's getting swept under the rug. And with tourists finding, like, other things to do in the physical world, other things to spend time on that have some kind of physical, tactile connection to get the mind off the emotional part. So what's interesting about that is it's a new moon in Taurus. And, you know, Taurus is also about all the material things that we need to have, like, a safe and secure place, um, something solid and reliable to come back to, our possessions, our assets, our land, our home, all those kinds of things that, you know, give us stability in, in knowing that, you know, our life can have a pattern and it's not going to get upset. And yet the new moon is saying we need some new things injected there, you know, like that maybe some of the old ways that we're seeing, you know, that Uranus Saturn square, those things are falling apart. And when we think about Taurus and having to do a lot with, like, you know, earth things, possessions, the earth energies, the assets and the resources of the earth, what we have going on now is, like, a call to look at the way we're using resources, both personally and in the world, and finding new ways to do it. Now, we were getting a lot of signs, and I said this last month, you know, that we were going to see this at the end of last month, coming into this spring, a lot of signs showing that, you know, security, the things that we depend on, those material things, could come under a lot of chaotic situations. And we're seeing a lot of that in the economy, in the supply chains of things being scarcer, things like that. And and so now just yesterday there was a cyber attack on the gas line that brings the most of 50% of the oil and gas to the east coast of the U.S. So this is like a perfect example of like, do we need to rethink the way that things are being done because there, you know, there's just, it's a changing world and that Taurus has to do some changing with it or its structures can start to fall apart. So it's kind of interesting, you know, because like on the one level, you know, Taurus is really connected to the traditional kind of energy 
like conservative energy, heritage energy. And so like when it's feeling insecure, it's going to want to go back to those things that worked, right? But the thing is, those things that worked for us personally under this new moon, we may be seeing they need to be changed, that they're not working as well. But here's the thing. Maybe we even need to go back further. Maybe we need to go back into the past and find ways to be more secure about the things that we need. Maybe not necessarily the things that we want, but the things that we need to have that stability, to have that reliability. So when you think about Taurus, it has a lot to do with agriculture, with the energy of when humans first, the age of Taurus, which was four to 6,000 years ago, was when humans really settled down into areas where they developed agriculture so they could have a reliable source of food, assets, the things that were needed without always having to run around and rely on nature and haphazard conditions to have those things. So maybe what we're being called to in this new moon in Taurus is to go even further back, to go back to a simpler life where we can all be more responsible about the basic needs we have. So maybe planting a garden, you know, maybe finding ways to be more self-reliant, not necessarily just yourself, but remember the North Node in Gemini, self-reliant in a local area for the things that we basically need. The pipelines, the grids going down in Texas, the prices of things going up, these are all signs that are showing us, signs from nature showing us the old ways aren't working, the old structures are stressed, they're falling apart. And maybe they've gotten a little too complex. When somebody can hack a computer and turn off an oil pipeline, maybe things are a little too complex. If you're making your own fuel in your local community and it's being distributed locally, don't see how that could happen. Just one example. So I think that's really what we need to do with this Taurus, is not to fall back into this Taurus new moon, not to fall back into an old stuck pattern, but to fall and to look back into this wisdom of the past, to find ways that we can be simple and create on a local level, a reliable nest, home, community, family, whatever it may be, for those basic needs, those basic earth, practical, tourist needs. Now, interestingly enough, the moon is sextiling Neptune pretty tightly, which shows the new moon, which shows that there's a lot of inspiring and imaginative ideas out there in the collective on how to do this, you know, and that there's opportunities to connect with those who have those similar ideals as you. And then also the moon is trining Pluto, applying to, trying to Pluto, which is in, therefore, an earth sign too, Capricorn, and saying, yeah, it's time to, like, roll our sleeves up and get into this deeply. It's time to use that input we're getting emotionally, that input we're getting from our environment, the signs that we're receiving from nature, spirit, the world, whatever you want to call it, and 
really roll our sleeves up and make the transformation happen. Make it happen now. Make it happen in these very simple, earthing ways that we are feeling our security so that we can move from there to take the deep emotions that get triggered by this and use them as a transformational tool to inspire ourselves to change and make the connections, make these deep connections, moon Pluto, with people. Clear some space out. Create something new. Watch the Pegasus rise from what is being created, this new, new energy. Um, so Venus is the ruler of the new moon, and Venus is in Gemini heading towards the conjunction to the north node. So once again, just reaffirming what we see. To go out there, make those connections, Venus and Gemini, externalized, debaceous, um, ex wanting to make connection, wanting to make intellectual contact, wanting to take in information, wanting to spread it all around. So Venus is going to lend her hand to the mission of that North Node, to the mission of this new moon in Taurus, in her sign. So really good opportunity this week, this next two weeks, this lunar cycle, to look into those things that, where you can contribute on that and start making those kinds of connections. Now it's really interesting that same day we have what I consider probably the toughest aspect of the week. Mars is square Chiron. And there's woundedness here going on. Mars is that male energy, that aggressive, strong, individualistic ego energy that just goes out and pushes to get what it's want. But when it's squaring Chiron, that means it's hurting the other people around it, the situations around it, when it's pushing like that. It's too hell-bent on its own mission to be able to take an input. So you're, you're becoming the wounder in the Chiron myth if you fall into this lower energy of the Mars square Chiron. So you have to be really careful. And we have to be really careful individually ourselves. Mars square Chiron can be a physical injury, can be a physical illness, can be an accident. So we need to be really careful of how we're moving, how we're taking care of our body this week. A Mars transit is at least three days acutely, maybe even a little bit more on each side. There's this very aggressive yang energy out there, and it's causing a lot of trouble. It's causing a lot of struggle. It's causing a lot of tension. And at the same time, Mars is sextiling Uranus. So what's that saying? For certain people, it's saying, I need to break free. I need to break free of the circumstances that I'm in. And we'll seize on opportunities to do so. So here we are, you know, wanting some new experiences, wanting new connections, wanting new people. If these... If, if what is old is holding us back, that new moon in Taurus, that Mars square Chiron, old systems, that Saturn square Uranus, then the Mars sextile Uranus is ready for something new. It's ready for a new download. It's ready for a new experience. It's ready for a new person, a new group, a new insight, a new perception to break that stuck, stagnant energy that's sitting there. By Wednesday, we have Mercury trining Saturn, and we also have a Sun sextile Neptune. So very, two very different energies on Wednesday. Mercury trine Saturn is like, yeah, you got the plan now. Roll up the sleeves and do it. Do the work. You know, get down, do the details. You know, take care of the things you need to take care of and um, do that work. And, um, and has a good attitude about it. It's really detail-oriented, um, sees the, all the um, trees in the forest, so to speak, 
and knows how to deal with all those things that, um, that need to be taken care of for a plan to be properly executed. So, look at that, but then you have the sun sextiling Neptune that same day, and that can be a little diffusive, but yet at the same time, it also is feeding our idealism, our inspiration, the things we want to do are all being fed by that. And, and so, it's an interesting combination, because if it's used properly, the mind of the, the and the, the, the brilliant intricate mind of Mercury Saturn can take some of the ideals of that Sun Saturn, take some of or Sun Neptune and, and take some of the inspiration from that Sun Neptune and get it down and 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 get it working into a system, get it organized, get it communicated, get it articulated. So real interesting energy. And maybe it's something where we can, it's handing off from that new moon the day before where we, where we see what we want to do and now we get to work on it, you know? So that's real interesting energy too. Thursday is the day Jupiter goes into Pisces. Now I talked about that in the monthly, um, blog last week. So I'm not going to go too much into detail again on this in rulership only going to go about two degrees into Pisces before it turns retrograde, turns around, and by July 29th, back into Aquarius. So to me, just a little taste, Jupiter and Pisces. But it is pretty poignant in the point, point, timing of that little taste because it is during this ripe time of opportunities to connect with other people. And then Jupiter and Pisces is all about that. It's all about diffusing the boundaries between people and groups and, and recognizing the underlying connection of all that. So very poignant time for it to go into Pisces only for about two and a half months before it will return to Aquarius all the way till December 30th. So we're really, really still in the Jupiter and Aquarius um, world these days. Um, the last thing I want to mention is on Saturday, we have a pretty quiet end of the week. But on Saturday, we have one bumpy, awkward um, aspect, and that's Mars quincunxing um, Saturn. Mars quincunxing Saturn is the word should. It's hearing that word should in your mind or from others or from circumstances like you should be doing this. But inside, it's not what you want to do. That's the problem. That's the disconnect right there. So it's a real odd one to try to find the right balance with because there's this duty obligation, this should versus what you really feel like you should want to do, not should, not want to do. So that's the want. And, 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 it's, and it's easy to fall under the influence of negative people or environments and have them influence you and bring you into that should energy. Um, it, 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 it really is best if we can do the what we want to do instead but we have to release this energy in a very steady slow reliable way or it's not going to work it's just going to get bumpy really fast again and frustrating so interesting energy to work on with the weekend but the rest of the weekend is a nice flow so it's really kind of really like one of the the only things that's really difficult to deal with in that sense and, and have us look at those shoulds versus what we want to really do. All right. This is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. I am available for all kinds of readings. Um, my email is m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com. That's m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 
at gmail.com. Um, I do natal birth charts, predictive readings, elections for the best timing, relationship charts, um, locational or astro photography if you're looking for p- places to move, um, children's, all types of stuff, fixed star charts if you're looking for your deeper soul purpose. So um, just drop me an email and we'll talk prices. Um, my email is also my Zell account number. So if anyone, I know some people like to occasionally uh, drop a donation in for the blog. Um, so if you'd like to, that's the best way to do it. Um, really, the, uh, the best way you can repay me for the blog, which is a free service to all you beautiful people, um, is to please pass it on to anyone that you think would be interested in it. And if you need a reading, you know, come in, you know, see me. We do some, do some amazing readings with a lot of energy, with a lot of people, beautiful, humbling experiences every, every day, every week. Um, also, there are classes available. I have five beginner classes available. Same thing, just um, email me, and they're on Dropbox. They're 25 a class or 20 if you're a student. Um, otherwise, uh, sign up on the YouTube channel for the um, for getting notifications for when I do the blog. It's also available on all kinds of podcasts. So just go to your favorite podcast, whatever it is, Apple Podcasts, whatever, and look up the Astrological Winds channel. I think I'm on about 15 different podcasts these days. So um, do that. And um, and otherwise, I try to social media bomb some of you. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So that's why it would be best to be a follower. Um I've also shut down my Facebook and Messenger still because it got hacked two weeks ago. So I'm going to probably wait another week or so before that comes back up. So um, until then, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. Um, Set a new intention for that new moon in Taurus. Like I said, look to the house. 22 degrees is in, and that's a good place to set that intention. Until next week, this is Matt Lawton signing off.